Mani Padme Hum Mum Mani Padme Hum Mum Mani Padme Hum Greetings, conscious co-creators of the new earth. Today, August 15th, the day of Mother Mary Ascension. I know many people call it the Assumption, but I'm not assuming anything. I know Mary and she has ascended and it is good. So as we connect with these divine feminine energies of the goddess, the queen, we have a special transmission today with the Atlantean, the new divine masculine, the new Atlantis energies blowing in to rise, protect, and support the divine feminine, the goddesses, the Magdalens of the white rose in this great ascension. And our special transmission for today is from Divine Bro Star of the Light, Michael Love, the teachings of Atlantis, Pleiadian Light Forces transmission. A special message to the star seeds of the new earth for immediate planetary broadcast, prelude. The Pleiadians often tell stories designed to bring you to higher levels of consciousness. It's not so much about the story, but about how it's encoded to trigger your memories. The data in this transmission is derived directly from channeled Earth Alliance intel and from the ancient mystery school knowledge guarded and passed down through the ages by the Great White Brotherhood. The knowledge is guarded because it is so powerful. It is reserved only for the earnest seeker who comes forth humbly with a pure heart and with heightened consciousness level. The light that you seek is near you even now. The light is for the one who desires to improve the quality of life, not only for himself but for all. The information in this data stream is a true and accurate account of what happened in Earth's past and the most important part is it involves you. The Pleiadians teach that light is simply information. This is the light of truth that leads one to divine realms. If one has no information, then he is surely in the dark, and this is the darkness. We say, let there be light. Tonight we share a very real and grand message from ancient Atlantis that will play an important role in your modern incarnation on planet Earth. This data stream is extensive and will take some time to integrate. We encourage you to make some quiet time to sit down and take in this information slowly. We also suggest that you listen for a second time so that the light herein will integrate into your being. It's good to take some notes as you go because something important will be triggered and remembered inside of you and this is where you must focus. After taking in this light, listen closely to your inner being for the next steps and follow that path. There is an ancient part of your being that is just now becoming fully aware how how magnificent it was and still is, and we are here now to reawaken these ancient memories and reacquaint you with the grand part of yourself. It is said by the wise ones that a being can stumble across the advanced knowledge taught in the mystery schools. However, one must be fully open in heart and mature in consciousness for this knowledge to be understood and to have any effect upon him. This incredible knowledge was used to build the grand civilizations of Atlantis with the primary goal of creating heaven on earth. It is also said there is a designated and special time when one is ready to receive the light of this knowledge. And we tell you the truth, that the time is right now. Stand by for super amazingness. Begin transmission, great one. Advanced knowledge of the mechanics of the universe was brought to earth millions of years ago by higher conscious star races from fifth dimensional star systems. The Pleiadians, the Arcturians, the Syrians, and the Andromedans are the primary star nations that seeded and infused everything in the earth realm with infinite cosmic Akashic intelligence and information. This infinite information field is stored inside the cells of all life on earth and all the crystals and minerals of the earth and all the water of the earth and all fire as well as in the ether of this realm. Every sphere of the earth is built from this informational field and is completely infused with the entirety of it all. The totality of this stored information is called the Akasha and the Living Library. It is written in the records of the Great White Brotherhood that in the middle of time, 
in the shining civilization of atlantis when gods walked the earth one star family from the sirius sea star system called the syrian dynasty established earth treaties with the arcturians and bore children referred to as the sons and daughters of the stars these divine children would eventually become the twelve families of atlantis these syrian arcturian hybrid children were isolated from the rest of the surface population and placed on an island in the atlantic ocean where they were taught daily from advanced mystery school knowledge one of these special atlantean star children was named Ningishida, the son of Anki, of the royal Syrian dynasty. It is said that his face shone like the sun with the appearance of a beautiful angel. Ningishida grew into an Atlantean god of all goodness and the highest wisdom, and his list of accomplishments and contributions to human civilization are mind-boggling to say the least. In Ningishida's younger years it is recorded in the ancient tablets that he did assist his father Enki and then Hursag with the fashioning of modern man after their own image and their likeness in the Garden of Eden. As the twelve families of Atlantis matured into wise adults, they became the high council and guides for the entire civilization of Atlantis. After thousands of years of spiritual practice and development, he became the primary teacher of knowledge and wisdom to the civilization of Atlantis. The ever-wise Ningishida became known as the later days of Atlantis as Thoth the Atlantean. This being was very human-looking, and as with all the pantheon of ancient gods, a spirit animal was used to symbolize his divine ability. The ibis was used to depict him because the ibis will clean up the banks of a river after a flood. As you will see, this is exactly what Thoth did when he came to the land of Kem, Egypt. It is recorded that Ningishida Thoth did achieve the highest levels of consciousness of any being that has ever walked on earth. Ningishida Thoth was not only one of the greatest spiritual teachers that ever existed, he was the master architect that built all megalithic temples of earth, the master alchemist who literally transformed lead into gold, and he was a master magician who conquered the laws of nature and became immortal. It is important to say here that no matter how divine and wise Ningishida Thoth became in Atlantis, the rules of his Syrian dynasty family over the entirety of the earth during the days of Atlantis placed Thoth first under the command of his father Enki and ultimately under his grandfather's command, the primary Syrian sky god, Anu, whose authoritarian word was final on any matter. Around 12,500 years ago, when the great civilization of Atlantis was at its peak, a cosmic cycle was closing as the Sirius Sea, planet Nibiru, was moving through Earth's solar system on its 3,600-year orbit. The chief scientists of Syrian dynasty in that Shar proclaimed a dire space weather forecast for planet Earth as the massive planet Nibiru was coming in very close for a near-Earth flyby. After much discussion by the councils, it was indeed decreed by the father god Anu in that shar to keep the news of the coming earth calamity from their creation, the earth humans, and to allow them to all be wiped out by the waters of the great flood. This world-changing decision was etched into the tablets and the minds of the gods for all eternity so they could remember what happened in those days. After the destiny of humanity had been decreed, both Ningishida and his father Enki went out of their way to try and help and save humanity from what was coming. At least Enki and Ningishida managed to secretly save a few of their beloved human creations, Noah and his family, as well as samples of all DNA on earth, for the purpose of repopulating and replenishing the earth after the great flood. Ningishida was an influential member of the Atlantean Old Kingdom, Atla, Ra, priesthood, who also took great care to preserve the master temple crystals of Atlantis. These massive crystals were moved to safety in time and are still buried in Earth's crust today, generating the most powerful energy vortexes on the planet. When time was to be fulfilled, the great winged red destroyer Nibiru came close to Earth and its magnetic net force was so strong that it completely overtook the Earth. North became south and south became north, and the Atlantean legend says the earth literally stopped spinning for one day. 
This world shook with magnificent force, and the great ice sheets in the south and the north poles, as large as mountains, broke loose from the shaking and violence of the ground. In those ancient days there was much advanced technology, far beyond what humans know today, and by spectacular airships powered by water did the gods travel in the skies of earth and even to other star systems. Just before the calamity struck earth, the royal family of the Syrian dynasty gave command to lift only their people plus the twelve divine families of Atlantis into the skies above the earth in great spacecrafts to wait out the deluge in safety. As the gods watched from above, the massive ice plates from the north and south rushed down into the oceans, and the mighty oceans rose six miles into the skies. Water covered the whole earth by six miles deep in those days. The ice age was ended abruptly by the great deluge, and alas, the grand city of Atlantis had fallen. The tablets of destinies and the fate of humanity had been fulfilled. During the first shower after the great deluge, the waters had receded and dry land appeared again. The Syrian dynasty landed back on the surface of earth and began to rebuild their global gold mining empire. After consideration of how the Syrian dynasty allowed most of humanity to perish in the deluge, Thoth and Anki lamented and then firmly set themselves against some of their own royal family members for allowing this terrible thing to happen. You see, here is where the story changes. Thoth himself made his own secret plan for the future enlightenment of the humans he and his father created. Thoth, Ningishidath, bowed in his heart at that moment to provide humanity with a way to achieve and realize their own divine potential. Thoth knew that humans were created with the divine spark of life. Aho, brother. And spirit. However, they would have to reach for its attainment out of the fallen world they were now in. He vowed to make his Atlantean knowledge available to all of humanity so that important information would never be withheld from the beings of this world again. He made a plan that ensured even the future children of Atlantis, the star seeds who are now living on Earth in present time, could read his words and be trained again into the ancient Atlantean priesthood to become a fully enlightened god of their own. He also knew that since these divine star children were cut off from their ascension work at the time of the great deluge, they would strive to complete their mission in a future incarnation on earth. This spiritual master from Atlantis saw you in this present incarnation, and he knows you well, because you are his direct blood and family. He knows your resolve, he knows your abilities, and he knows you will absolutely attain your goal. Thoth then became filled and consumed with a great fire and purpose and began putting all of his energy into developing a higher human civilization and restoring Atlantis back to the paradise it was before the deluge. Though before the great flood Atlantis was originally concentrated in a small island colony beyond the east coast of North America and near the northern tip of Africa below the European west coast, Thoth's plan for New Atlantis was to recreate its glory all across the planet. Everything to build again from solid foundation, Thoth proclaimed. This time, however, we will build the great temples of Atlantis in every land, and we shall begin in the land of Chem. And after this, the command was given to lift the twelve families of Atlantis into great spaceships and travel on the wings of the morning toward the land of Chem. It is written that when we landed on the wings of the morning and arrived in Chem, we were confronted by a barbaric people, but I, Thoth, quickly subdued them by a strong crystal pulse from my staff. I established order and light among these people, and in time they became as the children of the gods of Egypt. Great advanced temples and buildings with blueprints from beyond this world were soon planned and erected, all up and down the Nile Valley. Most of these temples are still standing to this day. It is said if you want to know Atlantis, know Egypt. The secrets of Atlantis are in plain view in Egypt. For a time to keep his plans secret and to keep peace with his Syrian royal family, Thoth played the game to rebuild their gold mining operations and quickly rebuilt their megalithic spaceports all around the Sinai Peninsula. Over several shars on earth in those days, Thoth and his Syrian family built megalithic spaceports all over the world including Nippur, Baalbek, Gobekli Tepe, Temple Mount Israel, Yoruk, Puma Punka, Tiwanaku, Dwarka, 
and Teotihuacan, the primary earth spaceport, the Great Pyramid of Giza. It is written and established in Thoth's own words as well as in the records of the Great White Brotherhood and the mystery schools that Thoth Ningishida, the Atlantean, is the designer and builder of the Great Pyramids of Egypt and that its purpose was to serve as a landing corridor and beacon for inbound gold transport craft from Nibiru. In the first emerald tablet, Thoth says, Built I, Thoth, the Great Pyramid, patterned after the Pyramid of Earth Force, burning eternally so that it too might remain through the ages. In it my knowledge of magic science so that it might be here when again I return from Amenti. I, while I sleep in the halls of Amenti, my soul roaming free will incarnate dwell among men in this form or another. Furthermore, it is recorded in stone in Syrian dynasty records that after the deluge had destroyed their original Anunnaki landing corridors, a new landing corridor for the cargo ships coming from outer space was needed to transport the mined and processed gold back to Nibiru. Here is the ancient account of the building this massive spaceport in the land of Kem from first-hand knowledge. It is established that a new landing corridor for the Anunnaki ships coming from outer space was needed. The landing path on the twin peaks of Arata in the north were selected and anchored. To demarcate the landing corridor, two other sets of twin peaks required to delimit the landing corridor's boundary, ascent and descent to the secure. Where the second set of twin peaks was required, mountains there were none, only a flat land. Above the water, clogged valley from the ground, protruded artificial peaks thereon we can raise, so did Ningishida to the leader say. On his tablet the image of smooth-sided skyward rising peaks for them in straight lines he drew. If it can be done, let it be so. Let these peaks also be as beacons for the ship serve. Measuring the great lines from above according to the position of the stars on the flat land above the river's valley, Ningishida, a scale model, did build the rising angles and four smooth sides with it he perfected. Next to it a larger peak he placed, its sides to earth's four corners he did set, by the Anunnaki with their tools of power, where its stones cut and erected. Beside it, in a precise location, the peak that was its twin, he, Ningishida, did place. When this artful peak to the heavens rose, to place upon it the capstone, the leaders of the Syrian dynasty were invited, of Electrum, an admixture by Gibel, another son of Anki, in charge with a metallurgy and maker of magical artifacts. Fashion was the apex Benben stone made, the sunlight to the horizon it reflected, by night like a pillar of fire it was, the power and light of all the colored glass crystals to the heavens, and a beam it did focus. When the pyramids were first built by Thoth in the early days of Kem, he placed massive, beautiful Syrian crystals of great power that were rescued from the original Atlantis temples and placed them both outside and inside the new pyramids of Giza. The crystals were described in different writings of the time to be composed of quartz infused with gold, silver, and platinum, diamond, and beryl, and several massive ancient transparent and dara crystals of fire fused with monatomic elements were also recovered after the flood and placed inside the great pyramids. Here is a first-hand account of the powerful crystals Thoth placed inside his twin pyramids from a later report of Ninurta and his chief mineral master as recorded in the Syrian tablets. And I entered unto the radiant place and the house, which is like a mountain to inspect the array of crystals and instruments inside Thoth's great pyramid. I followed the horizontal passage opposite the grand gallery where I reached a large chamber with a corbelled roof whose axis lay exactly on the east-west center line of the Great Pyramid. Its emission and outpouring of vibration which is like a lion whom no one dares attack. The powerful vibration came from a large fiery crystal fitted into a niche that was hollowed out in the east wall. It was the destiny stone, emitting a brilliant red radiance which I saw in the darkness. The crystal was the pulsating heart and power source of the Great Pyramid. This fire crystal emitted a strong beam that was tracking every movement of the fiery birds of the sky. 
In the narrow passages only a dim green light glowed. The grand gallery glittered in multicolored lights. Its vault is like a rainbow. The many-hued glows were emitted by twenty-seven pairs of diverse glass-like crystals that were evenly spaced along the whole length of each side of the gallery. Each crystal emitted a different color radiance. Then I moved to the uppermost grand chamber where I beheld its pulsating stone. I was now in the pyramid's most restricted, sacred chamber, from which the guiding net radar was spread out to survey the heavens and the earth. It responded to the vibrations with bell-like resonance. The heart of the guidance unit in the sacred chamber was the Gug crystal, direction-determining crystal, that guided the great ships from Nibiru to Earth. The records go on to say when the artful works of Nengishida designed were completed and ready, the Anunnaki leaders, the great twin peak, entered, and what they saw they marveled, Ikur, house which like a mountain is, they named it, a guide for the celestial chariots from Nibiru, and a beacon to the heavens it was. Then by his own hand the Nibiru crystals activated, inside airy lights began to flicker, an enchanting hum and vibration, the stillness broke. The Atlantean firestone, the stone of destiny, inside the great mountain's interior was causing the chambers to glow with the reddish light of heaven. Outside the capstone all at once was shining by the blinding light of its pulsating crystal. Brighter than the sun it was casting its beams to the stars. These otherworldly Syrian and Arcturian crystals were spoken of by Thoth Tehuti, is being passed down in ancient days from Lemuria to the Atla Ra priesthoods of Atlantis and were called Andara, which means the light of beauty and perfection. Andara is an exotic form of transparent monatomic silicon dioxide that is often fused with other types of crystal and other precious elements. The ancients used these powerful crystals because of the way they refracted high vibrational light scalar and tachyon waves from higher realms into their temples these sacred glass crystals of atlantis were visually stunning in appearance and emitted powerful energetic auras that were all colors of the rainbow and could be seen for miles the atla ra placed massive fifty foot tall blocks of these crystals inside their twelve primary temples and these powerful and beautiful holy grail stones were known as the master crystals of atlantis the Atla priests of Atlantis took great care and effort to safeguard and preserve these valuable crystals before the great deluge occurred. Large pieces of these powerful crystals were removed from the caverns where they were buried pre-flood by the Atla Ra and brought forth after the deluge to the land of Chem, Egypt, and placed in the Great Pyramids. Thoth's face on the Great Sphinx, when in the future days it will be asked, when and by whom was this great marvel? the twin pyramids of Giza, fashioned, and for what purpose? And Thoth's father Anki said, Let us, beside the twin peaks, a monument create, the age of the lion, Leo, let it announce, the image of Ningizhida, Thoth, the peak's designer, let its face be. Let Thoth's face precisely toward the place of the celestial terrace gaze, for to guide them inward, bound from the heavens, is its sole purpose. When, by whom, and the purpose, let this monument to future generations reveal the secrets of Atlantis and Egypt. And after the great peaks and the eternal lion were erected in the Nile Valley, I, Thoth, rested. Then was on my way to begin speaking clearly to the children of men about the knowledge and wisdom I had gained in Atlantis. The emerald tablets in the first days of Chem, and to the children of the stars of the new kingdom of Atlantis did Thoth, in the angelic light language of Sanzar, by his own hand, inscribed the great words of the teachings of Atlantean priesthood on twelve plates of indestructible and cosmic emerald, codifying the spiritual mysteries of the highest order. It is said that every spiritual seeker is destined to read this ancient cryptic work. Each one must seek out and read the full text of these writings himself, and if he is fully open in heart and mature in consciousness, the light of this divine knowledge will be understood and it shall have a positive supernatural effect in his life. In the Emerald Tablet teachings of Atlantis, Thoth is describing astral projection of the third eye out of body, combined with specific visualizations and the decree of powerful angelic tones and names. In ancient Atlantis, the star children would memorize these enchantments, 
before entering into meditations in order to achieve results, the children of the stars in Atlantis became masters at leaving the body at will through the third eye chakra portal, the doorway in your being that grants access to other dimensions and realities. Again, we say one must be ready in heart and consciousness to receive the following information or will not be understood. This is the way it is encoded. All of this information comes from the highest place of goodness and love and will only improve life and elevate you to much higher ways of being. A very serious, helpful hint from the master teacher himself is, sometimes you may have read it several times and your intention means everything. If you are an earnest seeker of the light, you will not stop seeking until you find it. So what are some of the mysteries and secrets of the Atlantean star children codified in the Emerald Tablets? Well, how about not aging and not dying in the physical body, for starters? Atlantean teaching number one, how to be immortal in the human body. Now I, Thoth, give ye the key of immortality. Here is the secret of balancing the magnetic poles of the body to the earth. List ye, O man, whilst I, Thoth, give the secret to that ye, too, shall taste not of change. One hour each day shalt thy lie with thine head pointed to the place of the positive pole north. One hour each day shalt thy head be pointed to the place of the negative pole south. Whilst thy head is placed to the northward, hold thou thy consciousness from the chest to the head. And when thy head is placed southward, hold thou thy thought from chest to the feet. Hold thou in balance once in each seven and thy balance will retain the whole of its strength. Aye, if thy be old, the body will refresh in, and thy strength will become as a youth's. This is the secret known to the masters by which they hold off the fingers of death. Neglect not to follow the path I have shown, for when thou hast passed beyond years to a hundred to neglect, it will mean the coming of death to the body. Note it is important to do this exactly the way it is described here. This is powerful magic, that yields powerful results. Atlantean teaching number two, how to eliminate darkness. Note the angelic names below are simply tones that vibrate in such a way as to open channels on the right side of your brain that allows you to connect and flow with the light. These sounds override and overcome the lower channels of the left brain. Now I, Thoth the Atlantean, shall teach you how to eliminate darkness and low vibrations from any space. Seek ye first a place bound by darkness. Place ye a circle around about thee. Stand erect in the midst of the circle. Use thou this formula, and you shalt be free. Raise thou thine hands to the dark space above thee. Close thou thine eyes and draw in the light. Call to the spirit of light through the space-time, using these words, and thou shalt be free. Fill thou my body, O spirit of life. Fill thou my body with spirit of light. Come from the flower that shines through the darkness. Come from the halls where the seven lords rule. Name them by name. I the seven, three, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine. By their names I call them to aid me, free me, and save me from the darkness of night. Untanas, Quartas, Chietal, and Goyana, Quartal, Semveta, Ardal, by their names I implore thee, free me from darkness and fill me with light. Know ye, O man, that when ye have done this, ye shall be free from the fetters that bind ye. Cast off the bondage of the brothers of night. Atlantean teaching number three, how to enter the halls of Amenti. Calm, let thy mind be, at rest be thy body, conscious only of freedom from flesh. Center thy being on the goal of thy longing. Think over and over that thou wouldn't be free. Think of this world, la um il ganuver, and over in thy mind let it sound. Drift with the sound to the place of thy longing, free from the bondage of flesh by thy will. Hear ye while I give the greatest of secrets, how ye may enter the halls of Amenti. Enter the palace of the immortals as I did. Stand before the lords in their places. Lie ye down and rest of thy body. Calm thy mind so no thought disturbs thee. Pure must ye be in mind and in purpose, else only failure will come unto thee. Vision, Amenti, as I have told in my tablets, 
Long with fullness of heart to be there, Stand before the Lord's in thy mind's eye, Pronounce the words of power I give mentally, Mekut el Shab el Hale Shur Ben el Zabrut Zin Ephrim Quar el. Relax thy mind and thy body, then be sure your soul will be called. Atlantean teaching number four how to enter the Shambhala realm. Now give I Thoth the key to Shambhala, the place where my brothers live in the earth. Darkness but filled with light, the light of its sun. Darkness of earth, but light of the spirit. Guides for ye when my day is done. Leave thou thy body as I have taught thee. Pass to the barriers of the deep, hidden place. Stand before the gates and their guardians. Command thy entrance by these words. I am the light. In me is no darkness. Free am I of the bondage of night. Open thou the way of the twelve and the one so I may pass to the realm of wisdom. When they refuse thee, as surely they will, command them to open by these words of power, I am the light. For me are no barriers. Open, I command, by the secret of secrets. Edom el ahim sebert zur adom. Then if thy words have been truth of the highest, open for thee, the barriers will fall. Atlantean teaching number five. Travel beyond the earthly domain for six hours. In your astral travel, when ye have released the self from the body, rise to the outermost bounds of your earth plane. To accomplish this, speak ye the word, Dor el lil la. Then for a time your light will be lifted. Free may ye pass the barriers of space. For a time of half of the sun, six hours, free may ye pass the barriers of the earth plane. See and know those who are beyond thee. Yea, to the highest worlds may ye pass. See your own possible heights of unfoldment. Know all earthly futures of soul. Bound are ye in your body. But by the power ye may be free. This is the secret whereby bondage shall be replaced by freedom for thee. Calm let thy mind be. At rest be thy body. Conscious only of freedom from flesh. Center thy being on the goal of thy longing. Think over and over that thou wouldst be free. Think of the word, la um, il, gonuva, and over in thy mind let it sound. Drift from the sound to the place of thy longing. When astral traveling, one must first become a master in this art, following the smooth curved tunnels of light and spheres leading ever upward and always begin the sacred journey with pure in heart and pure spirit. There are so many more teachings written in these ancient Atlantean tablets that will be revealed to the true seeker who takes this light in. Thos said he created an entrance to the very real inner earth, Amenti, underneath the Great Pyramid. He also stored the Akashic records underneath his lion monument in Kem, where they still exist today. In another account, he says when he flew his grand airship to the land of Kem, Egypt, to begin rebuilding Atlantis. He buried his magnificent starship also under the Great Sphinx and encourages you to go there and dig it up. Thoth, the Atlantean master of masters, also scribed the Hermetic Doctrine through his incarnation as Hermes, which contains the seven great universal laws. Why is this a big deal? Because his goal in gaining this knowledge was to be able to control all the forces of nature that exist in the universe. To read the laws is one thing, to meditate deeply on them is a different matter, because one will come to the understanding of each principle and how it is working in one's life. Thoth explained that when this understanding is obtained, and one begins to work with the law in practice, one has then conquered that universal force. Thoth said all real magic is simply the understanding of and using of the seven great hermetic principles towards a creative goal. Thoth seven universal laws, hermetic principles. One, the principle of mentalism. The all is mind, the universe is mental. Number two, the principle of correspondence. As above, so below. As below, so above. This principle embodies the truth that there is always a correspondence between the laws and phenomena of the various planes of being and life. Three, the principle of vibration. Nothing rests, everything moves, everything vibrates. Number four, the principle of polarity. Everything is dual. Everything has poles. Everything has its pair of opposites. 
like and unlike are the same. Opposites are identical in nature, but different in degree. Extremes meet. All truths are but half-truths. All paradoxes may be reconciled. Number five, the principle of rhythm. Everything flows in cycles, out and in. Everything has its tides. All things rise and fall. The pendulum swing manifests in everything. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. Rhythm compensates. Six, the principle of cause and effect. Every cause has its effect. Every effect has its cause. Everything happens according to law. Chance is but a name for law not recognized. There are many planes of causation, but nothing escapes the law. Mind and thought is the first cause. 7. The principle of gender. Gender is in everything. Everything has its masculine and feminine energy and principles. Gender energy manifests on all planes. One interesting note about the ancient teaching. This writing describes the seven natural laws that control everything in the universe, specifically your life. What is mind-boggling is this enlightened teaching illustrates how you are fully able to control these controlling forces. This is the primary secret of the power of the Atlanteans, demonstrated by the wisdom and technology they possessed. All god beings that display supernatural ability and technology have gained the understanding of how to control the natural laws of the universe. These seven hermetic principles teach how we manifest matter from the source field, by using mind, focus, and emotion. It also explains why everything happens as it does as well as how karma works. Modern manifestation and law of attraction techniques were derived solely from the ancient secrets of secrets, alchemical doctrine which is written around these seven principles. Manifesting in ancient Atlantis was simply called magic. Great one, it is written in the Atlantean teachings that the children of the stars the priests and the priestesses of Atlantis were created from a divine seed from other worlds, and this family of light has never been separated. The ancient books say the same special group of light beings have incarnated over and over together on earth, even unto this modern day. These are the great ones spoken of in all great books that number as the sands of the sea and heaven, and who overcame the whole world. You are one of these divine Atlantean priests and priestesses, along with your 4.5 billion brothers and sisters starseeds that dwell on earth today. We are all here now incarnated on earth in a different age, finishing what we began in ancient times. Just by being here, we are raising consciousness levels all across the world to finish rebuilding our great kingdom of heaven on earth. Phil said the main way to attain this kingdom of heaven was to be very curious and gain as much knowledge as you can. Over the next 30 days, go and read the sacred books. They are readily available if you seek them. When you seek, keep seeking deeper. There is more, much more. Ask the hard questions and the true answers will be given. Do not be distracted by what any others say that is critical about what you are seeking. There is a very real truth deeper than what they can know. Ponder on the mind-boggling ancient megalithic structures still standing on earth today that were built by these star children. The Atlantean teachings are a divine star map left behind by the master teacher, Tholf. These esoteric writings are helping us find our way back to our ancient home and to the shining civilization we once knew. It is time for our return to Atlantis. Hurry for a new day is dawning as the sun shines between the great peaks. Shall we depart on the wings of the morning? Ode to the children of the stars of Atlantis, written by the ever-wise and loving Thoth the Atlantean. I, man, know ye this knowing. Always beside thee walk the children of light, masters they of the sun power, ever unseen yet the guardians of men. Open to all is their pathway, open to he who will walk in the light. Free are they of dark, amenti, free of the halls where life reigns supreme. Sons are they and lords of the morning, children of the light to shine among men. Like men are they and yet are unlike, never divided were they in the past. One have they been in oneness eternal, throughout all space since the beginning of time. Up did they come in oneness with the All One, up from the first space, formed and unformed. Given to man have they secrets, that shall guard and protect him from all harm. He who would travel the path of the Master, free must he be from the bondage of night. Conquer must he the formless and shapeless, conquer must he the phantom of fear. This is the true account of the time of Atlantis before the great flood, and then on in Egypt, and finally 
our journey out into the whole world and into the now moment where we shall finish building our sacred Atlantis. You are closer than you may think in your ascension to the next highest realm. That which you seek will soon be seen. It is required that you simply look a bit deeper. It is your destiny to return again to your greatness, where you will walk beside the gods. What was shall be again. Thank you for all that you do and for coming to earth at this time. We give you great honor as one of the children of light, and we stand beside you until all things are fulfilled. Let us know if you have memories of the ancient days of Atlantis and from our times in the land of Kem. Godspeed, Michael and the Pleiadians from 5dearthproject.com. Thank you for joining us today on this beautiful day of the Divine Mother. If you found value in this work and our other works, please like, comment, and share these videos with your teams and tribes to get these messages out to our 144,000. If you'd like to help support us and our work and mission, you can make a pledge on Patreon or a donation to PayPal at our links at eaglelovecondor.com. Have a most beautiful and awakening journey. The Eagle and the Condor love you all. Namaste.